Hello, my name is Rebecca. Well, today I'm going to answer the C2 All in the Purple Elephant by Jarrett J. Kersoxa. All in the Purple Elephant. Mr. McLaughlin had had always told his children that they should ne that should they ever come across a purple elephant, they could keep him. Peter and Shelby still wanted an elephant to call their own. One day, on a stroll through the park, Shelby tugged at her father's shirt and said, Look, Daddy. Sure enough, there in the flower garden, garden sat a purple elephant. He was lost and had no place to call home. Mr. and Mrs. McLaughlin looked at each other in disbelief. Well, a promise is a promise, said Mr. McLaughlin. Mr. Elephant, said Peter, would you like to come live with us? That would be nice, said the elephant, but please call me Ollie. And that is how Ollie came to live with the McLaughlin family. Mr. and Mrs. McLaughlin gave Ollie the rules of the house to be nice to one another, no running with scissors, and, to, and help with the chores. Ollie was agreeable to these. The children made up a bed on the fold-out couch in the living room. Ollie didn't have a room to call his own, but he didn't mind. He was happy. Ollie quickly involved himself in the children's lives. He enjoyed hopscotch, though he needed some practice. You would think... You would think him a natural at soccer, but he preferred Shelby's ballet lessons. He also enjoyed kickball, but he was too strong a kicker for his own good. Ollie was especially popular on hot days when the children needed relief from the heat. After dinner, the McLaughlin family had impromptu dance parties. Oh, the dance parties they would have. Ollie loved to dance, but Ginger, the McLaughlin's cat, didn't much care for dancing. She didn't much care for Ollie, for that matter. He had taken her favorite spot of the couch at night. Mr. Puddlebottom, McLaughlin's downstairs neighbor, certainly wasn't happy with the new tenant at all. Over the months, Ginger's disdain for Ollie grew and grew. Finally, she came up with a devious plan. One evening, Ginger scratched at Mr. Puddlebottom's door. He was particu particularly cranky as the dance party upstairs was particularly lively. His full mood aside, he, inv he invited Ginger in for a saucer of milk. She laid out her scheme, and Mr. Puddlebottom's seal gave way to a wide grin. It's brilliant, he said. My famous cousin would be delighted to have an extra animal for herself. And with that, the concern Spiriters shook hands. That night, when the McLaughlins were all tucked in in their beds, Ginger cozied up to Ollie. You know, the McLaughlin family regrets ever taking you in. Naturally, this upset Ollie. The McLaughlins meant the world to him. The thought of being a burden on them broke his heart. But where could I go? Well, said Ginger, the circus is in town for one final night. Perhaps they would take you. Ginger helped Ollie pack his bags. Ollie left a heartfelt note apologizing for ever being a problem, but the McLaughlin would never read it. For the second Ollie walked out the front door, Ginger ate the note up. Peter and Shelby awoke the next day wondering where Ollie was. Perhaps he had gone, gone for a morning job. When they returned home from school and he was still nowhere to be found, they grew concerned. By the time they put up lost elephant posters around the neighborhood, the circus had already left the city. Lost elephant. Ringmaster Rankovich ran a tight ship. If his animals weren't performing, they were rehearsing. If they weren't rehearsing, they were traveling. On these midnight trips, Ollie lay awake, chatting with with a few friends he had made. Ollie and the islands, Zoe the monkey, and Ollie shared their dreams, their passions, and stories of the lives they left behind. Life on the road was not easy. A year later, the circus returned to the city. Opening night came and went with no sign of Peter and Shelby or Mr. and Mrs. McLaughlin. Night after night, Ollie would look out into the audience for his old family, but they were never there. 
After the last performance, Ringmaster Rankovich was feeling generous and gave everyone the night off. Ollie wanted to show Leon and Zoe his old neighborhood. When they arrived at Ollie's apartment building, it was being robbed! Ollie needed to do something, and fast! Ollie kicked over a fire hydrant and, hydrant and sucked up all the all water in his trunk his trunk could hold and blasted the crooks. Leon roared to scare the robbers, waking the sleeping tenants, while Zoe nabbed the school of stolen goods. The police were soon on the scent and arrested the robbers. All of the curious tenants took to the streets, including the McLaughlin family. Ollie, yelled Peter and Selby. Oh, how we missed you. Why did you leave us? Please come home again. The Red Paxton took Ollie by surprise. I loved you. He said, you'd have me back. There will be none of that, snarled Ringmaster Rankovitz as he steps on the sets. Come down, my circus animal, to the circus car. It's off to the next time. Well, I'd like to stay here with my family, said Ollie. You signed a contract, and you owe me another 20 years of circus performing. Now, on to the cart you go. But I don't remember signing any contracts, thought a puzzled Ollie. Mr. McLaughlin snatched the contract away. Upon quick inspection, he proclaimed, This is a forgery, and I can prove it. I happen to be the landlord of this building, and every month I receive a check signed by one Mr. Puddlebottom. The handwriting on your contract is Mr. Puddlebottom's, not Ollie's. Everyone was shocked. But not as soft as Mr. Puddlebottom and Ringmaster Rankovich, the cousins had been caught red-handed. So, Ollie, said Mr. McLaughlin, won't you please come back and live with us? Absolutely, said Ollie. Then he thought of something. What, what about my friends from the circus? Could they live here, too? The police drove away with me, Ringmaster Rankovich and Mr. Puddlebottom. Well, it does look like we'll have an open apartment, said Mrs. McLaughlin. And so, much the chargon of ginger, Ollie the elephant, Leon the lion, and Joey the monkey all moved in. They lived in the apartment just below the McLaughlin family, with whom they had many dance parties, both upstairs and down. I hope you enjoyed the book, Ollie the Purple Elephant.